Good afternoon. So now we are in our last discussion for this uh, for this module and for this course, which is the emergency care. Okay. Let's clap our hands and let us be proud to ourselves because we finish all of this. So let's start. So, what are the things included in emergency care? So, first, basic life support. So, basic life support is very, very important, not only for us uh, healthcare workers, but it's also important to all of the people because life is what it is. Uh, Life is the component of basic life support. Okay, basic life support or the American Heart Association is our uh, resources for this uh, discussion. So, according to American Life American uh, Heart Association, that they are always asking you, "What is your why?" Okay. So for them, their why is life. That's why they are giving, they are providing basic life support, support because of life. So basic life support is the foundation of saving lives after cardiac arrest. So later on, we will see what is cardiac arrest. It is a basic emergency care technique such as rest. It includes rescue breathing and CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So first, let us try to remember or to review what is the function of your heart. So the main function of your heart is it pumps blood all over your body. Without your heart, okay, no blood will be supplied to your heart, to your brain, to your kidney, to your liver, or to any part of your body. So you imagine your heart is on cardiac arrest this with this uh, is the scenario so it will have a dead heart muscle so see this one is pumping pumping well and this one okay slowly by slowly it will stop so cardiac arrest is a condition where heart malfunction and stops be beating unexpectedly so it depends upon what is the reason why your heart stops beating. So the healthy heart also is like this. Your heart is being pumped or is being uh, is, fun is functioning because of an electricity. Okay, during cardiac ar elect uh, cardiac arrest, this electricity, okay. Is loss. You see, this one is with electricity and this one without electricity. So we have two main reasons why your heart stops beating or you're having cardiac arrest. So it can be plumbing problem or it can be electrical problem. Plumbing problem. Usually, you have a plaque in your heart. You have clots in your heart because you have you have you are diabetic. You are hypertensive. You are uh, hyperlipidemic or have high cholesterol level. You are a smoker. So these are usually the plumbing problems. Electrical problems are those problems occurring. Okay, occurring, which affects the electricity of the heart, the nodes, the nodes who are responsible for the electrical function of the heart. These are the impaired one. So what are the general concepts in basic life support? We need to know what are the uh, age or the age groups which are given basic life support. First is the adult. adult uh, it is the age from adolescence and from adolescence to older. Then children, it will be from one year of 
age to adolescence. So if it's nine months, it's not included in children. One year old up to adolescent or 18 years of age, okay, it will be under children. Infant, less than one year of age, okay? Because based on the age group, that's, uh, it differs from the technique of checking the pulse and etc. and doing the CPR itself. So signs of puberty, what are those signs of puberty or uh, adolescence? So in male patient, there will be chest and underarm hair. And female patient, there is any breast development. So adult, ad, uh, adult if your patient is uh, from adolescents and older, so if your adolescent is having chest or underarm hair or any breast development, if she is female, he or she will be considered adolescent. Then, CPR. What is CPR? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation is a life-saving procedure for victims who have signs of cardiac arrest. Life-saving procedures for victims who have signs of cardiac arrest. It supports the breathing and circulation. It provides blood and oxygen to the heart, brain, and other organs until advanced emergency care is given. Then, it's done if the person does not respond, is not breathing, and has no pulse. Remember, CPR is only done if your patient have three problems. First, unconscious, not responding. First, not breathing. Second, not breathing. And then third, no pulse okay so these are the three criterias you need to consider before starting cpr you cannot start cpr for those patients who have pulse you cannot start cpr for those patients who is breathing you cannot start cpr for those patients who is not responding you need to have three criteria so cpr is as easy as c a b before, they are considering A, B, C, but now they are considering C, A, B, compression, airway, and breathing. Because according to study, they believe that for compression, okay, if you give compression, you will pump blood all over the body, so your body will have an oxygen, so your airway, airway will be okay, your breathing will be okay if there will be compression first. So we need to do always high quality CPR. So what are the qualifications that we are doing high quality CPR first? We need to start compression within 10 seconds of recognition of cardiac arrest. Suddenly your patient uh, collapse, okay? 10 seconds, you need to start 10 seconds after you recognize the event. Because so according to them, if you did 20 seconds, if you recognize it after 20 seconds, your patient's survival will be less. So it, it should be 10, less than 10. So push hard and push fast. Don't be a vegetable. Don't be a, uh, like, uh, without, uh, Without force, you need to do it with pushing it hard and pushing it fast. Compress at the rate. Okay, remember that the rate of compression should be 100 to 1,000, 100 to 120 per minute. I will repeat the rate of compression. If I'm asking you what is the rate of compression, you will answer me. 100 to 120 compression per minute. The depth is, it depends upon the age group. That's why we are classifying what age is the person. So if the patient is adult, at least two inches or five cm, there is at least, okay? 
if our patient is children, it will be at least one third of the depth of the chest or about about is different from at least so for children it is about two inches for infant it sh it should be about one and one half inches or four cm okay so this is the depth of compression maybe you're thinking or asking in your mind mom how will i measure this okay it is only an estimation you cannot measure it literally, but you can estimate it. Allow complete chest recoil after each compression. Then minimize interruptions in compressions. Try to limit interruptions to less than 10 seconds. If, you're paid, if there are so many bystanders, okay, make sure that you're not interrupted by them. You need to do as much as you can the CPR okay without interruptions give effective breaths okay how you will know that you're giving effective breaths it should have a chest rise chest rise then avoid excessive ventilation you need to avoid excessive ventilation because you are giving uh, air to the abdomen so it's called abdominal inflation that's why you're thinking your patient is having big tummy or big abdomen because you already put all the air in the world because of your excessive ventilation. So don't do that. Then the adult chain of survival. So let's start with the adult patient. So adult chain of survival, we should always consider or follow these steps okay during the recognition first is recognition and activation of the emergency response system recognition and activation of the emergency response system next immediate high quality cpr so after you call okay uh, 911 i have one patient here collapse okay can you come here after you code, then you start immediately CPR. Then after that, rapid defibrillation, you ask for help and then let them bring a defibrillator or AED. Then basic and advanced emergency. Okay, When the ambulance is there, they will take over and they will do what they need to do. Then advanced life support and post-arrest care. The patient is already in the hospital. So for the pediatric, it, there will be a uh, difference, okay? See, what is the difference? In the pedia, there is prevention of arrest, and they will start first the compression before calling. As if you notice, they will start the compression before calling. Why? Because the patient or the pediatric, usually they are the reason why they are having cardiac arrest because of respiratory problem like choking. So they need to give in first CPR so they can have oxygenation. Okay, Unlike uh, adult, usually their cardiac arrest is caused by a heart attack. So they, their respiratory system is not... Uh, impaired okay that's why we need to do cardiac arrest uh, CPR first to the pediatrics before calling then next is uh, next is advanced life support and then post cardiac arrest so the same so so now let us uh, mention one by one what are the steps in adult basic life support and pediatric basic life support. Okay, so first, basic life support sequence. So first is we need to verify the scene. Okay, before doing any any BLS or any CPR, we need to make sure that the scene is safe. Okay, look around left and right, front and back, you need to make sure that you are safe. If you're not safe, how you will give 
uh, CPR to others if you're not safe, you will be one of the patient. So make sure that you're safe or the scene is safe. Number two is check for responsiveness. Okay, how you will check for responsiveness of the patient? You need to tap the shoulder. Okay, if your patient, this is for adults. If your patient is an adult, okay, you need to tap the shoulder. Hey, hey, are you okay? Hey, hey, are you okay? Make sure that you tap with force because if you tap it with, uh, not with force, okay, how you will check for the responsiveness of your patient. So, hey, hey, are you okay? Hey, hey, are you okay? So if your patient is unresponsive, then you check for breathing. How you will check for breathing? You check for the rise and fall of the chest, okay, for 10 seconds. One, two, three, and two, until 10, okay? There are patients who have this, are, they are calling it as agonal gasp. Agonal gasp is like the patient is dead already, but he has all, only the remaining breath of his life so you should consider this uh, breath as abnormal breathing or no breathing at all you should consider as no breathing don't consider it as normal breathing then activate the emergency response system and ask someone to get an aed okay call any local emergency medical number if no response and breathing if no response in breathing call for help okay activate emergency response call an a uh, and get an aed then number five you need to check the pulse for uh adult patient i told i told you already or i, th I taught you already what are the steps in checking or what are the pulse site that you need to use during cardiac arrest? So the pulse site that you, you need to use is the carotid pulse. Carotid pulse is, okay, you locate your trachea and then using your two to three fingers and then you slide it to the right or left. It's up to you, which is nearer to, to the patient, okay? It's between the the trachea and the neck muscle, okay, in a groove. So you count it for five seconds, but not more than 10 seconds. Then if your patient have no pulse, no breathing, unconscious, you start quality CPR. So adult compressions, first you expose the chest, okay? If your patient is having tight clothing, okay, you cut it or you remove it, you remove the button and then you expose the chest so the patient uh, you can help in the breathing properly then place in supine position make sure that the uh, surface of the patient or the uh, surface where your patient is lying is hard okay or flat surface because you it's it, uh, the cpr will not be effective if it's uh, soft or and it's not flat or hard. Then count out loud. You need to count out loud. Then what is the rate of compression? It should be 100 to 120 compressions per minute. It should be high quality compressions. Okay, as, we, as I've told you, hand placement on the lower half of the sternum. Okay, so it should be on the lower half of your sternum or your chest or the chest bone, okay? So this is the first part, and then this is the second part. Usually, it is on the, below the nipple line, okay? On the left lower side. So later on, I'll show you the video on how to do this. Then compress at least two inches, at least two inches for adults, and then complete recoil after each compression. Then, remember the importance of firm surface. As I've told you, it should be flat and hard surface. 
then allow adequate chest recoil. So it means if you push, okay, you allow the chest to recoil or to, go, to return in on its normal position before you push again. Then you should give also breaths. There are two ways you can do opening of airway. You can use head tilt chin lift maneuver and you can use a jaw truss. So the first picture here is the head tilt chin lift maneuver. Okay, this is indicated for patients without spinal cord injury damage. Okay, I will repeat, head tilt chin lift maneuver is used to those patients who have no injury in the spinal cord. Then the other one is jaw thrust. So jaw thrust is you're not moving or lifting or elevating the chin, but you're just opening the jaw, lower jaw, okay? So this is used for those patients who have spinal cord injury to do not further the damage or the injury, they are doing the jaw thrust. So in adult breaths, gives two breath with a barrier device. So we are using the pocket mask. Each breath over one second, then you need to have a visible chest rise with each breath. Resumes compressions in under 10 seconds. So don't give excessive excessive ventilation, but you only give each breath over one second. One, two. So this is the pocket mask that we, we will be using, okay? So how to use pocket mask? Position yourself at the victim's side. Place the pocket mask on the victim's face using the bridge of the nose as a guide for correct position. Okay. Then seal the pocket mask against the face using a hand that is closer to the top of the victim. Okay. You will see here. The other hand is in the nose or the nose bridge, and then the other one is here, okay? So make sure it is sealed because when you're putting air or giving breath, okay, it will be, it will come out if there is a, uh, if there is a hole or it is not sealed. Next, after you give compression and breath, you need to check rhythm after five cycles. You need to do CPR for five cycles, okay? It means that you will do it five, 30 is to two, 30 compression and two breaths, so five times, okay? If your patient moves or you, you revive the patient, okay, then, you will place the patient into recovery position. So how you'll do it, do it, do this. So tilt the head backwards, place arm at the side, okay? Like the patient is sleeping and then place on the, your side, okay? Place on the lateral position, place the other hands on the uh, cheek and then other arm across the chest. Then bring far knee up to a 90 degree angle like this. And then roll person over towards you with knee and angle and ensure head is supported. So this is, this is our recovery position if your patient is revived. Okay. So the five cycles of CPR or five times of 30 compressions and two breaths is equal to two minutes. Okay, so that is the first, the first one that I've discussed is the one rescuer. 
adult basic life support support uh, now we'll this we'll be discussing the two res with the two rescuers so with the two rescuers uh we will repeat uh most of the steps first is to verify the scene make sure that you are safe rescuer one or the one who, who discovered the scene or the scenario he is the rescuer one so he will check the responsiveness. Hey, hey, are you okay? Hey, hey, are you okay? Then he will check for breathing. He will uh, see the rise and fall of the chest for 10 seconds, not considering the agonal, agonal gasp. Agonal gasp will be considered as no, no breathing. Then if what second rescuer came, activate the emergency response system and get an AED. Then call any local emergency medical number. Then the rescuer one will position and check the pulse. Okay, he will check the carotid pulse. If no pulse and no breathing and unconscious, the rescuer one will give high quality CPR. Okay, 30 is to two, 30 compressions and two breaths, high quality CPR. And then if the rescuer two came, he will put or apply the AED. He will apply the AED. So rescuer two definitely will do the uh, will apply the AED. Okay. What are the steps in uh, putting AED? First, open the case with the AED. Then turn on the AED. Then apply the adult electrode pads to the person's chest. Attach the connecting cables to the AED. Clear airway from the person. Let the AED check the person's heart rhythm. Make sure everyone is clear of the person. Then press the shock button if the AED advises a shock. So we'll do it. We will do it in our demo. Next, performing two rescuer CPR. Perform the two rescuer CPR. Now you'll do the two rescuer CPR. So high quality CPR, the first rescuer, okay, 30 chest compressions. Then the second rescuer will give two compressions using an AMBO bag. Okay, later you, I will show you. So now the patient is not using anymore the pocket mask. Uh, the Sorry, the... Rescuer is now using an AMBO bag, not a, a pocket mask, okay? In the absence of the neck injury, proper position, tight seal, okay? You will see an easy clamp. You will use an easy clamp technique uh, on how you will, you will hold the uh, AMBO bag. Then squeeze the bag over the one second until the chest rises. Do not overventilate because you will cause abdominal distension. Then you repeat the previous steps and exchange rule. So the rescuer one will be now the rescuer two. The rescuer two will be now the rescuer one. So it will be exchange. Then continue until help takes over or the person begins to move if the patient moves do the recovery position that we did before okay so we finish uh, one rescuer and two rescuer adult cpr adult bls now we'll do infant bls one rescuer so first is you verify the scene next you check for responsiveness now you will you can you cannot check here on the shoulder but you check on the foot or the sole of the foot baby 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 then breathing check for rise and fall of the chest infant and child activate emergency response system send someone to get an aed so if you witness the arrest okay if you witness the arrest for an infant it will be Activate emergency response system. You call first before you do CPR. But if you don't witness the arrest, okay, like you saw a patient already 
cyanotic or bluish in color, you start first CPR before calling. Okay? Like what I've told you in the chain of survival of the pediatric. I will repeat, if you witness the arrest, okay, you saw one patient collapses, okay, you saw all act in the actual scenario, you can call first before you start the arrest. But if you don't, this, uh, if you did not see the collapse itself, okay, you saw already the patient is bluish or cyanotic, okay, it means that you start CPR first before uh, you start CPR before calling. So in checking the pulse, you will check not the carotid pulse for pediatrics or infants, but you will check the brachial pulse. How you will know the brachial pulse, okay, you just locate the shoulder and the elbow. It is in the middle of the elbow and the shoulder, okay, middle, middle section, center, in the midway and in the inner area. Okay, this is the brachial pulse. You count for one to 10 seconds, not more than 10 seconds, okay? So infant compression, use a high quality compressions. You need, don't do two pumps or two hands compression, but the baby, you only use two fingers in the center of the chest just below the nipple line. So this is the nipple line, just below the nipple line, you compress it with two fingers. 30 compressions in 15 to 18 seconds or 100 to 120 compression per minute. The depth of compression is about one and one half or 1.5 inches. Okay, about complete recoil after each compression. Infant breaths. Head tilt, chin lift, maneuver, neutral or sniffing position. Okay, you will do head tilt, but you need to not so, uh, not elevating too much the chin. Okay, give two breaths with a barrier device, each breath over one second. It should have a visible chest rise, resumes compressions in under 10 seconds. What I'm telling about neutral position or sniffing position is like, okay, like this, okay? You imagine your patient or the baby is having a uh, pillow here. So this is the head tilt maneuver for them, okay? Not like this, like in the, uh, in the adult. Why? Why it's a sniffing position? Because they told that the sniffing position or uh, neutral position is a good way or is a good sight anatomical position where air is coming coming more compared to the uh, head tilt maneuver of the adult. Okay, so the ratio for the baby or the infant is 30 is to 2 also for one rescuer, 2 minutes and in, it's also 5 cycles. So check for the rhythm after five cycles. Okay, check again the rhythm. So check the pulse and the breathing. If, if the, there's pulse and breathing, okay. If there's pulse and breathing, you position the patient into recovery position. So you can use the two recovery position. Okay, some they are using like this. Okay, so the secretions will go or will came out. And then others, they are using this position. Now, we'll be discussing BLS or infant BLS using two rescuers. So first, you verify the sin. Then, you check for responsiveness. Baby, baby, in the sole of the foot. Baby. Then, check for breathing not more than 10 seconds. If no response and no breathing, call for emergency medical number. Position and check the pulse. To check pulse, brachial pulse okay you check for the brachial pulse then no pulse no breathing and unconscious the one who found this the uh the scenario 
or the collapse or the is will be the rescuer one so the rescuer one will start high quality cpr then rescuer one will use 30 is to 2 compressions high quality cpr rescuer two will get the aed and will apply the aed then perform two rescuer cpr the first rescuer will do the chest compression and the second rescuer rescue breaths using bug valve mask okay or using again the ambu bug so now they are using the two two uh, rescuer for uh, infant bls the ratio will not be 30 is to 2 but it will be 15 is to 2 if two rescuer for infant only infant only i will repeat 15 is to 2 for two rescuer in infant bls only so 15 compressions with two thumbs and circling technique so later i'll show you how to do that then compress at least one about 1.5 inches so this is called the two thumb encircling technique okay your thumb is in the front side and then your four fingers in in the back okay then you compress then the other rescuer will be giving the uh, two breaths using easy clamp technique then repeat after five five cycles you check again if the patient moves okay you do the recovery position so later i'll show you how to do this uh, uh, a video about bls infant and adult so next topic is all about rescue breathing rescue breathing is given guys for patient who have pulse and people without breathing so it should be two the person with pulse and the person without breathing okay you will give rescue breathing okay if i told you your your patient is having uh, is having pulse but no breathing okay it's not breathing so your response should be rescue breathing so rescue breathing in adult okay give one breath every five to six seconds for adult you give one breath every five to six seconds so it should be 10 to 12 breaths per minute for infant you need to give one breath every three to five seconds or 12 to 20 breaths per minute. Why? The infant, you will see the, the interval is less lesser than the adult because it is five to six seconds because the infant have high respiratory rate than the adult. So they need more breaths. So this is according to the American Heart Association. So now let's do the first, uh, let's go with the first aid for different uh, emergency situations. Okay, you found your patient choking. Okay, what is the universal sign of choking patient? Choking patient is having a clutching of the neck. This is the universal sign, clutching of the neck. Clut, uh, choking is obstruction of the foreign bodies in the airway. So this is the sign that the patient is choking. So you will see here, if the patient is choking, this is the respiratory airway, okay? If your food go here, instead of here okay you will have difficulty breathing so we have uh signs uh, or types of obstruction we have the mild and we have the severe the difference between mild and severe in the mild you can still talk okay in the severe you cannot talk okay because it's a severe it's very blocked so what are the things you need to do when your patient is having choking if your patient is adult or child 
if your patient is adult and child, you do the Heimlich maneuver or abdominal thrust. I'll repeat, if your patient is adult or child, you do the Heimlich maneuver or abdominal thrust. Okay, how you will do it? You, you make a fist, you put this fist on the midsection of the chest, chest bone, and you locate your umbilical area or the umbilicus, then your chest bone here. Okay, in the middle of this, in the middle of this here, okay, you put the fist and then you move it upward, okay, until the patient will ex will expectorate the, the food. So that is the Heimlich maneuver or abdominal thrust. So if your patient is pregnant, Okay, if your patient is pregnant and obese and you cannot hold fully the, uh, the body, so you put your hand on the chest, okay, on the chest where you're putting for CPR and then you do chest thrust, okay. If your patient is child, you do also a Heimlich maneuver, but you can kneel so you will reach the patient. Then choking response. If your patient is unresponsive already, okay, unresponsive already, you do or you proceed to CPR. You proceed to CPR, but don't check the pulse because only your patient have is having choking. Okay, you do the CPR, but don't check the pulse. Each time you're opening the airway to give breaths, open the victim's mouth wide. Look for any object. If you see an object that can easily be removed, remove it with your fingers. But don't do it if the uh, object is far, okay? Because maybe you will push it more. So you can remove it if it's near in the or visible to the mouth already. Then after that, after five cycles and two minutes CPR, activate the emergency response system if someone has not already done so. If your patient is an infant, okay, and he or she is responsive, you can do the five back blows and five chest thrusts, okay? Five back blows is doing like this, okay, in the shoulder. In the shoulder blade of the patient or the baby, you give five back blows and then position the patient five chest thrust. I'll show you later on. Then, if your patient is already unresponsive, if your patient is already, this is unresponsive, guys, unresponsive, you do also CPR. Okay, next, hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is severe uncontrolled bleeding. If, you're, if you have a big wound sustained from a motor vehicle accident, you can have a hemorrhage. So what you will do if you have hemorrhage? First is you remove any clothing or debris on the wound, okay? Then you stop the bleeding, how you will stop the bleeding, okay? The rationale is if there's any bleeding, you put pressure okay so you can control bleeding if you don't have gauze you you go you, you search for any clean clothing that you can put on the bleeding area okay bleeding is a life threatening so you should control bleeding because you will lose more uh you will lose too much uh blood okay Remember what is the importance of blood to your body. Then immobilize the injured part at, as much as possible. Don't move it. Immobilize it, okay? Don't move it. Then put pressure, okay, until the bleeding will stop. Then next is fainting. Fainting is sudden loss of unconsciousness from, from an inadequate blood supply to the brain, okay? 
what are the things you need to do in this time in this time you will place the patient into the reverse Trendelenburg position it means that the uh, sorry Trendelenburg position you place the patient leg okay higher than the head that is Trendelenburg position if you cannot place the head or the you don't have an electric bed okay you put a two pillows okay on the legs so to make the legs uh elevated than the uh, heart or the uh, head like this Or the other thing is the patient faint should sit down and lean forward, head between the knees. If a patient is unconscious and breathing normally, lay the person down and raise his or her legs above chest level. Okay, shock. Shock results from when the organs and tissues of the body do not receive enough oxygen containing blood okay i will repeat results when the organs and tissues of the body do not receive enough oxygen containing blood we have different types of shock we have the acronym chance to remember those we have c for cardiogenic cardiogenic is like when you're having uh, problem with your heart, problem with your heart disease of the heart, okay, it can cause shock. Okay, what will happen? Your heart will not pump, so the other parts of the body will not receive an oxygen containing blood. H is for hypovolemic. Hypovolemic is like you lose, you have too much hemorrhage, you, too, you have too much loss of blood, so you will have low blood pressure as i've told you low blood volume is equal to low blood pressure so you will die then anaphylactic shock anaphylactic shock is caused by an allergy okay an allergy which later on will be cause shock to your body then neurogenic shock is in the injury of the spinal cord then or neurons and then next is septic shock if you have this infection and you did not treat it it will be sepsis it will be infection it will, if you have uti and you did not treat that you do not treat that okay what will happen it will cause infection of the blood it will infect the blood okay when the blood is infected it will be system systemic okay all over the body it will be infectious infection there will be infection so it will be septic shock okay all of these types okay will have one symptom same symptoms they will have decrease or drop of blood pressure or hypo hypotension okay what are the things we need to do for shock okay as what we did in the fainting okay we need only to elevate the we need to elevate the leg of the patient for shock and fainting we need to elevate the leg of the patient so the blood supply will go back to the heart okay then loose tighten clothing okay the, so the patient can breathe then don't let the person eat or drink because may, he may ha have aspiration. If you suspect that the person is having an allergic reaction and you have access to an epinephrine auto injector, use it. Okay. The first line of defense or the first aid for patients who have anaphylactic shock or allergic reaction, okay, severe allergic reaction or anaphylaxis is you inject an epinephrine. Epinephrine. It's also called EpiPen. Okay, EpiPen. Later on, I'll discuss it. If the person vomits or begins bleeding from the mouth, turn him or her onto the side to prevent choking unless you suspect a spinal cord injury. So that are the things we need to do for patients who have shock. Next is the patient with stroke. Okay, 
very easy and very fast. Stroke occurs when the brain is suddenly deprived of its blood supply. The emergency care for stroke is fast. Okay, remember fast. F is for face is uneven. Okay, you will notice that the face of patient who have stroke is uneven. A is for arm is weak. Okay, ask him to elevate the arm. Okay, one arm is elevating but the other is not. Then speech is strange or slurred. Okay, you will see that. Uh, 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 and, uh, so that's slurred speech. So the patient is experiencing stroke. Then the T is time to call. Okay, you cannot do anything for stroke because the hospital is uh, has the capability only to do so. So what you need to do is you call nine one one. So it means that the patient have stroke. If you have this three fast. Okay, face is uneven, arm is weak, and speech is strange. You already have strokes. So you need to call. If you have blood pressure machine or any vital signs machine, you can take the uh, vital signs of the patient. Next is seizure or convulsion. Seizure or convulsion are violent and sudden contractions or tremors of muscle groups. What are those emergency care that you can? have stay calm and reassure bystanders loosen any tight clothing okay do not restrain the person because if you restrain the person it may result to injury do not put anything in the mouth okay as what we have in the olden days uh that we are putting a spoon in the mouth it's not it's not allowed okay when the person is on seizure okay just protect the head of the person, okay? Just put any blanket or soap clothing on the head. Make sure that the head is protected. This is only our priority during seizure, okay? After two to three minutes, it will go. And then position our patient into side ladder, side lying position so the uh, secretions will come out and will not be aspirated. So these are the usual things we can do to our patient. Then we can call for 911 for the ambul ambulance. Burns. Burns are injuries to the skin and possibly the underlying structures for example, bone and muscle, as a result of exposure to heat, radiation, and electric shock or chemicals. We have three types of burns, according, it's according to the layers of the skin. The first degree burn is affecting, affecting the epidermis. Second degree burn is affecting the epidermis and the dermis. And the third degree, it's affecting the epidermis, dermis, subcutaneous tissue or more. So major burns, what we need to do, is to do is to protect the burned persons from further harm. For electrical burns, for example, there is a source. We need to remove the, the make sure that the source is uh, power off so we will not have further damage. Then make certain that the person burn, burn is breathing, okay? The uh, we should always consider the breathing for the patient. Then, remove jewelry belts and other restrictive items that is burned. Cover the area of burn using a cool, moist bandage or clean clothing. Use a cool, moist bandage or clean clothing for the burned area. Then don't immerse large severe burns in water. Then watch out for signs of shock. If you have first degree burn, okay, you can just uh, wash the burn in a cool water. If you have second degree burn, you can cover the burn area with a clean cloth. Uh, rinse with a... Uh, cold water, and then you put a bandage. 
Then third degree burn, it's very serious. So you need to uh, rush the patient in the hospital and then make sure that the patient airway is patent. Make sure to position the patient into uh, what is this? Fowler's position so he will breathe well. And then the hospital will do or will manage the other things. Then apply, don't break blisters. Usually second degree burn, it will uh, have blisters. So don't uh, break it because it will cause infection. Apply lotion once a burn is completely cooled. Apply a lotion such as one that contains alo aloe vera. Then bandage the burn. If needed, take an over-the-counter painkiller because it's painful. If you have epistaxis, epistaxis is nose bleeding. What you need to do is you lean forward. Okay, it's not correct uh, practice or what you believe that you do like this. You lean forward, okay, so the blood will come out and it, it will not go inside. So pinch the soft part of the nose for uh, until the uh, bleeding will stop. So that is the epistaxis. For heart attack or myocardial infarction, which is discussed already in the diseases, you just only remember Mona Lisa, which is Mona. M for morphine, O for oxygen, N for nitroglycerin, and A for aspirin. Morphine is for chest pain. It is medication for chest pain. Usually, myocardial infarction or heart attack have severe chest pain. So morphine is the medicine. Oxygen, you need oxygen because there is lacking of oxygen of the heart. Nitroglycerin is a vasodilator. There is a dead uh, muscles of the heart because of vasoconstriction. So nitroglycerin will allow vasodilation. It will open the veins and arteries so the blood will come or will supply oxygen to the different parts of the heart. Aspirin is an anticoagulant. Okay, if there is a clot, it will uh, it will uh, remove the clot. So that is aspirin. Now, lastly is the anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis means severe allergic reaction. Severe allergic reaction is seen by, for those patients who have, uh, have different allergies to foods and medication. If you are nursing assistant, always ask what is the patient's allergy to food and what is the patient's allergy to medication. Okay, the first aid for allergy or anaphylaxis or severe allergic reaction, okay, is epipen, epipen or epinephrine pen. Okay, you just inject it to the thigh of the mid, uh, middle thigh of the patient, and then it's like nothing happens to the patient. So what will happen if you have severe allergic reaction? you will have difficulty breathing because you will have uh, severe airway uh, severe airway constriction. So you'll have difficulty breathing. These are the reactions of your body towards the allergens. So this is the most fatal one. So you need to put an EpiPen okay, to the thigh of the patient. So it will, the allergy will be subsided. So these are our last topic. And then later on, I'll give you your final module uh, exam. So good luck and God bless.